to run with it. He's to the five. He'll score! The Cavs race to a 7-0 record, and Sean Moore's Heisman stock was rising. But now Coach George Welsh is suffering after losing two games and his quarterback to injury. Receiver Herman Moore may be the savior. In Blacksburg, Virginia, the Hokies have been anticipating the Cavs' arrival, and Virginia Tech is ready to take off. Coach Frank Beamer looks for his first win against Virginia, and his defense is punishing. Quarterback Will Fuhrer is poised for a chance to unleash his talents and gun for Marcus Michael in the season finale. Tony Kennedy is anxious to find Pater and help the Hokies beat their arch rivals for the first time since 1986. For the Tech seniors, it's one last shot at Virginia. Virginia. It's the final game of the regular season for both Virginia and Virginia Tech as they renew one of the greatest rivalries in college football. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough. We're delighted to have you with us on ESPN for the Battle of Virginia as Virginia takes on Virginia Tech. By now, you all know the story of Virginia. The Cavaliers got off to a great start this season, 7-0 and the number one ranking, but they have fallen on tough times lately. They've dropped two of their last three. Nonetheless, they are still heading for the Sugar Bowl. They hope they go there with a record of 9-2. Meanwhile, the Virginia Tech Hokies might be the best team in the nation not going to a bowl game. They're 5-5 five five against a tough schedule. Among the opponents, they have defeated Southern Mississippi, which is bowl-bound, but they'll have a big test today against the Cavaliers of Virginia. As always, it's a pleasure to be working with former Pitt coach Mike Godfrey. Virginia facing Virginia Tech today, the Cavaliers without quarterback Sean Moore. Sean, this should be a great football game. Sean Moore is going to miss this football game. All the pressure will go on Matt Blunden, the backup quarterback. A member of the basketball team, Matt Blunden's an outstanding quarterback. He's a high school player that was recruited very strongly by everybody in the nation. He will have to get the job done today. He'll get a lot of help, but he needs to get a help in his running game. But also Herman Moore has to have a big game for the University of Virginia. Meanwhile, Matt Blunden, Herman Moore, and the rest of the Virginia offense faces a unique defense. The Hokies of Virginia Tech feature the wide tackle six. You don't see that very often. You don't see the wide tackle six very much anymore. Virginia Tech will run the eight-man front against Virginia. This is the toughest thing that Matt Blunden's going to have to face. Not only the fact that he's just starting the game as a quarterback for the first time, but he's facing a defense that no one uses. They will blitz Matt Blunden almost entirely the whole football game. And the other side of the ball for Virginia Tech, Will Fuhrer must have a big game at the quarterback spot for Virginia Tech to have a chance to win. Fuhrer, a talented left-handed quarterback. He has the Hokies ready for battle today. And you can hear the crowd revving up here in Blacksburg in the background. Fighting the noise and fighting the wind down on the field, our colleague, Kevin Kiley. Thank you very much, Sean. Well, Tech definitely has the home field advantage with this largest ever crowd in the state of Virginia. And believe me, they are large. Virginia Tech might also have the advantage when it comes to injured players. Vaughn Hebron, the great running back for Tech, will be back after three weeks on the sideline with a pulled groin. And when it comes to losing injured players, of course, Virginia on the downside. They've lost tight end Bruce McGonigal, and then against Maryland, they lost the great Sean Moore, the Heisman Trophy candidate. It's going to be an uphill battle. The wind is swirling. Could be a problem with field goals, and this could be a game where a field goal is a difference. Back upstairs to you. The Cavaliers of Virginia take the field with a record of 8-2. and two. They have lost two of their last three football games, including a matchup a week ago with the University of Maryland. And the homestanding Hokies of Virginia Tech at 5-5. Five and five. featuring maroon pants. They're inspired as a result of that. It's the first time they've worn their maroon pants since 1984. ESPN's presentation of CFA football, Virginia versus Virginia Tech, is being brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. Remember, no when to say when. By Washington Apples, the take-along snack that's always good for you. Bite into the best, Washington Apples. 
and by Remington Micro Screen Shavers. The stage is set for the Battle of Virginia. We'll have the opening kickoff from Blacksburg right after this. Is incomplete. Had Derek Dooley open, Dooley usually a sure-handed receiver had it go right through his hands, and the Cavaliers will have to punt into the stiff win. It was a good throw by Matt Blunden, right on the money. His first throw of the ball game. He had a good series. He settled down a little bit now, and now he can play football. Ed Garno is the punter. That average is best in the ACC. And it would be fourth nationally if he had enough attempts to qualify. You have a look at Marcus Michael. Back to field the punt. It's a short kick into that win. And it stops dead almost exactly where it hit at the 35-yard line, just a 28-yard punt. And the Hokies get the ball for the first time, led by their left-handed quarterback, Will Fuhrer, a junior from Bellevue, Washington. In the backfield behind him, Kennedy and Bryant. Expect to see Hebron for Kennedy. Cullen and Michael are the wideouts. The tight end is Greg Daniels. A strong offensive line led by Eugene Chung, Verniel, the other tackle, both right and watch the guards. True freshman center in Jim Pine. No score. We played two and a half minutes. First and ten, Virginia Tech from their own 35. And the first play from scrimmage for the Hokies picks up one. Kennedy off right tackle. For the Cavaliers on defense, a five-man front. The ends, Slade and Goodwin. Watch for Slade throughout the day. The tackles, Reynolds and Hall. All the tri-captain, as is Ron Carey, the nose guard. The linebackers, James Pearson and P.J. Killian, a freshman. The corners, Wallace and Covington. The safeties, Lewis and McMeans. Well, the two quarters you got to win, you have to take advantage of throwing the football. Virginia Tech has the win here in the first quarter. And Fuhrer looks to use the win. It's complete. Kennedy the catch out of the backfield. He is short of a first down. Out of the 42, they'll need three more to pick up a first down. But Tony Kennedy out of the backfield on an option route right here. He checked block first and then sat down right between the linebacker and the corner. P.J. Killian makes the play. Just a little option route. If it's zone, he'll sit down. If it's man coverage, he'll run away from the inside linebacker playing man coverage. Third and three for Tech. Draw play. Phil Bryant won't get there. He did well to get back from the line of scrimmage. Chris Slade at the bottom of the pile, as was P.J. Killian. Rich Boscia is the punter. He's averaging 38.4 per kick. Jason Wallace, one of the leading punt returners in the nation, waiting to field it. He signaled for a fair catch, and he watched it bounce into the end zone. Each team has had the ball once. Each team has punted once early in the first quarter. No score. ESPN's presentation of CFA football, Virginia versus Virginia Tech, is being brought to you by Infinity, who invites you to test drive their full line of luxury automobiles. And by Heil Furnaces, the energy savers. Lane Stadium, host to its largest crowd ever, and it's a raucous crowd effect. First and 10, Virginia. Virginia has four receivers in the game. Try the fullback. This time the Hokie defense was ready for Gary Steele. One thing Virginia did in their ball game last year, they got a lot of big plays. They had eight plays of over 30 yards, and they need big plays in their offense, and that's what they have to get today. Virginia Tech, on the other hand, cannot allow Matt Blunden to get comfortable. They have to blitz him, they have to keep after him, they have to show him a lot of different looks so that he doesn't get in the comfort zone in this ball game. Gain of two on first down for Steele, second and eight for the Cavaliers. No score. We played five minutes in the first quarter. Shovel pass. Nicky Fisher. Taken down just short of the 25-yard line. A pickup of three. Al Shambly made the tackle. 
Fisher will see regular action today in relief of Kirby at the tailback spot. Here you see the shovel, George. George, just a safe pass to Nicky Fisher. Al Chambly didn't read it real well, came up and made the play. Again, I think with the wind in his face, they're trying to make things easy for Matt Blunden early, trying to, trying to protect him a little bit. Third and a long five. Again, four receivers in the game for Virginia. London throws, Dooley drops it. Second drop for Derek Dooley on consecutive third down passes from Matt Blunden. See Derek Dooley going in motion. Tech's gonna twist a little bit in the defensive line. Here's Derek Dooley open. Good pass by Matt Blunden. Just took his eye off of it. Number 37, Archie Hopkins, get in there. Garno, excellent punt into the wind. Michael hesitated and returned it to the 42. A late flag thrown out at the 47-yard line. 43-yard punt and a 10-yard return at the play stand. This has to upset you if you're Frank Beamer because you have great field position, and I believe it's on tech. That overall record includes Beamer's six years as head coach at Murray State, where he did an excellent job. Did a nice job there. He was an assistant for me for uh, two years and then took over the head job in the Ohio Valley Conference. A lot of good football in that league in the Ohio Valley. Frank's an outstanding football coach, defenses especially. We've got a holding during the run back after change of team possession. Let's check in along the sidelines with Kevin Kiley. Thank you, Sean. You wonder how big this game is? Well, take a look at that South Stands there. If you know Lane Stadium, you probably realize it, it's never been there before. It was Thanksgiving weekend, and they felt that the students wouldn't show up in force for this game, so they sold a lot of the tickets that should go to the students. When the students found out about it, they wanted some tickets, so they erected those stands, 2,500 extra seats for this game. Back upstairs to you. That's what college football is all about, the rivalries. Tech and Virginia. It's been an outstanding rivalry, and I'm telling you, this is going to be an excellent football game. No score, 9.03 remaining first quarter. After the walk-off for the holding penalty, Tech begins from its own 36. <laughs> Fuhrer going deep, has a man open. Big play to the 15-yard line as Bo Campbell snuck behind the secondary. Will Fuhrer with an excellent job. He fakes the toss sweep. Now gets the free safety. Keith McNeese out of the middle and then throws back to Bo Campbell coming down the hash mark. Number 16, Keith McNeese just got out of position because of that play fake, and they snuck Bo Campbell down the hash for a big play. Colin is the starter at that position, but Campbell is more talented physically, according to the Tech coaches, and that's the first big play of the game, a 49-yard pickup to the Virginia 15. Back to the ground, Kennedy a big hole. He spins to the six, close to a first down. Watch Tony Kennedy, number 33, he's coming right at you. Look at the good blocking by the, def by the offensive line. Keith McMeans eventually comes up and makes the play. Virginia Tech on a great drive right here, down on the seven yard line. Second down, a short two for Virginia Tech. Again, Kennedy. First down inside the five. He's down at the two. Just old-fashioned smash. Miles football here, the toss sweep. Good block by Marcus McClung. Tony Kennedy picks up good yardage. Puts it on a two-yard line. Just look for Virginia Tech to just try to run it in. First and goal. 24 scores and 33 chances inside the 20 this year for the Hokies. Kennedy slipped and lost yardage. 
One thing that Tech likes to do down here is throw the fade route to John Rivers, the big, tall receiver. But I think with the success they've had running the football, they're going to come back and make a couple more shots at trying to get at it. Here, watch Will Fuhrer. Gets his leg just a little bit too far over and trips Tony Kennedy. He made the tackle. Will Fuhrer. <laughs> Loss of a yard. Second and goal from the three. No score in the first quarter. Touchdown. Mark Poindexter, the backup fullback, gives Frank Beamer and the Hokies a 6-0 lead. Mark Poindexter gets the ball, gets the two lead blocks by the fullback and the tailback, and knocks it in the end zone to give a quick 6-0 lead. He gave it to the power eye back that's usually a blocker. Mickey Thomas, conventional kicker. He drills it straight through from straight on. He remains perfect in PATs, 25 for 25. Poindexter, the touchdown. And it's Virginia Tech 7 and Virginia nothing. Mark Poindexter scored the touchdown. He's a sophomore from Rocky Mount, Virginia. It was just his fifth carry of the year, the sixth of his career, and his first career touchdown. From three yards out, it's 7-0 Virginia Tech. Well, a lot of times you'll take a player like Mark Poindexter, and he's a blocker in that power eye set because you usually always run to the extra blocker. What Tech did is give the ball to Mark Poindexter and let the fullback and tailback lead for him. to use the wind that the two quarters they have they were effective in that particular series we'll come back and look at the pass that was set up three Cavaliers waiting for the kickoff from Brian Reeves they're not going to shake Matt Blunden he was 21 and 1 in high school as a high school quarterback so he'll be I still think he's going to be effective he needs a lot of help from his teammates Reeves kickoff. Taken by Larry Holmes. He crossed the 20 and went down there. Let's take a look back at Will Fuhrer. When you have the win, you have to be able to throw long passes. Here he fakes the toss sweep, gets the free safety out of position, and throws the ball right down the field on the hash for a big play to Bo Campbell. Here's the touchdown. See the power eye to the right? They're coming back away from the power eye to Mark Poindexter. Good call by the Virginia Tech coaches. Virginia has started three consecutive drives now from its own 20. London with all day to throw. This one's dropped. Drops plaguing. Matt Blunden, this time it was Mark Cook, the tight end, who couldn't hang on. Matt Blunden not getting a lot of help early with the drop passes. He needs a lot of help in this particular football game. Good play action fake. They didn't come with any kind of blitz. They dropped everybody in coverage. He still found the open man, Mark Cook. Mark just took his eye off the football. The player that he wants to get the ball to is Herman Moore, but Herman is being doubled on almost every particular pass play out here. Second and ten. One and one for four passing, but the three misconnections have all been drops. Draw play Kirby. Down after a gain of one. Al Shambly at the bottom of the pile with help from Roger Garland. Now's the situation that George Welsh doesn't want Matt Blunden in. Third and eight. Talked earlier about Herman Moore. Herman Moore is a great big play receiver. Virginia Tech, to win this football game, must take him away. George Welsh knows that, so he's going to have to start moving Herman Moore around a little bit in the formation to try to keep him from being double. Third down and nine. Virginia Tech leads seven to nothing. Just more than six minutes left in the first quarter. That was Herman Moore in motion. London throws deep for Dooley, and he can't hang on again. Let me tell you one thing. He cannot throw the football any better than he's throwing it. Matt Blunden, coming out of high school, was an outstanding quarterback. Watch this pass. This is right on the money to Derek Dooley. 
the corner route it's right there just dropped the football Matt Blunden, there's his reaction. He knows one thing. He's right on target against the win. He knows he's going to get the win here in a few minutes also. Three drops for Dooley, one for Cook. Short punt by Garno. Michael fielded it on the run. Great field position to start for Tech. They're at the 46-yard line of the Cavaliers. A 29-yard punt and a five-yard return. Sure, ready to come back onto the field with a 7-0 lead. We hope you'll stay tuned for the football game following this one. Syracuse heading for the Aloha Bowl takes on number two Miami. A lot of talk this week out of Miami about their possibilities for the national championship. Certainly they are very much in the hunt for the national title, but they need a win over Syracuse to keep those hopes alive. Virginia Tech would like to get the ball to Marcus Michael in this type of situation, in this uh, field position. Big play receiver. Again, play action. Again, a man wide open. It is Marcus Michael. First down, Hokies at the 28. Marcus Michael is going to run an in route. He's the big play receiver for Virginia Tech. Here's the play action fake. Marcus Michael's running an in route. The linebacker. P.J. Killian's trying to get underneath it. He's not there. There's the pass to Marcus Michael. Picks up a couple yards after the catch. Jason Wallace on the tackle. 18-yard gain. 38th catch of the year for Marcus Michael. On first down. Vaughn Hebron, the leading rusher for the Hokies coming into today. He has missed the last three games with a very sore pulled groin. It's his right groin that has been bothering him, but he started practicing again on Monday. When I chatted with him yesterday, he said, no question, I'll be in there and carrying the ball often. Well, this kind of game brings out the players. They want to get in this football game. This is a game you talk about all year. This is a rival game. Nope, he's have three backs who have rushed for more than 1,000 yards in their career. Hebron, one of those three. Jeffries and Kennedy, the other. This is Hebron again. No blocking. He's taken down by three Cavaliers behind the line of scrimmage. Excellent defensive call by defensive coordinator Frank Spaziani. He knows he has to turn the game around a little bit. He's, he fired a strong safety on that particular play, and they ran the toss sweep into it. It's the type of play where you take a chance to reverse a halfback pass. You know you're going to be in good field, po field goal position with the win. Third and ten. Fuhrer is still perfect passing. He's three for three. He's not particularly mobile, and he goes down at the 28-yard line. B.J. Killian forced him down there. Chris Slade was also in the neighborhood, and that'll set up a likely field goal try. Good coverage by Virginia. Will Fuhrer knew... He didn't have anybody open. He knows he's in field goal range. He made a good decision right there just to take it down, Sean, and get as many yards as he can get and set the field goal up. Looked like they may go for it here. Yes, very surprising. They have the wind at their backs. It would be about a 45-yard field goal. They took a lot of time pondering this issue, and now Frank Beamer says we need a timeout as the play clock ticks down. The Hokies lead 7-0. We'll return to Blacksburg, Virginia in a moment. 7-0 Virginia Tech. You're looking at place kicker Mickey Thomas. The longest field goal of his career was last season, a 42-yarder. His longest field goal this year, just 37 yards. This would be about a 46-yard try. And Thomas is 0-3 from beyond 40 this year. As a result, team is going for it on 4th and 10. The only problem with that is he has the win with him. Fuhrer using hand signals to communicate with the wideouts. Going for the end zone. Man open. Touchdown. Nick Cullen, the touchdown reception. 13-0 Hokies. Virginia brought the strong safety blitz again, which puts him in man coverage. Nick Cullen just ran a post route. Will Fuhr puts it right on the money for the touchdown. Keith McMeans on the coverage.
Turns out to be an excellent call by the coaching staff at Virginia Tech. Thomas to make it 14 nothing. Touchdown reception of the year for Nick Cullen, the senior from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Makes it 14-0 Tech. Here's Tim Brendel. All right, Sean, thank you very much. Well, here's a rarity in college football on this big day. Indiana beating Purdue 28-14. They are sewing up right now a berth into the Peach Bowl. So good news, a team finally wins a game to earn the right into a bowl game. The final 28-14. So they take the old oak and bucket in the ball game, and we'll take on an SEC team. Interestingly, I need to throw it back and ask Mike Godfrey a question. Does this tell us that Virginia Tech wants this game or what, Mike? On fourth and ten, they go for the touchdown. 14-nothing Tech. A touchdown run of three yards by Poindexter and a 29-yard touchdown pass moments ago. Fuhrer to Cullen. We talked that Tech, despite its 5-5 five five record, is an impressive team, and they played an impressive first quarter. Although, if you're a Cavalier fan, you have to have some consolation to the fact that they dropped four passes and had they held on those balls it could be a different game right now. Well Frank Beamer and his coach is doing an excellent job. They're trying to be the aggressor in this football game rather than take the shot of the field goal out of the range a little bit even with the win they chose to take the pass and it worked out well for them. They're putting the pressure on Virginia. This time a short kickoff from Reeves. Holmes will play it along the sideline. He's in trouble. And down inside the 20, they'll mark him at the 17-yard line. The second Virginia Tech scoring drive covered 46 yards. It took five plays, two minutes and 29 seconds. Cullen, the touchdown reception from Will Fuhrer, who's talking with the press box. 17 career TD passes for Will Fuhrer. That is a Virginia Tech record. He was tied with Don Strzok. Frank Beamer's trying to use the wind as much as he can, Sean, here in the first half, throwing the football. London, looking deep, going deep, and it's caught. Flagged down, but the play will likely stand as Herman Moore makes the catch. Again, an excellent throw by Matt Blunden. He's sprinting out away from where Herman Moore is and throwing back. Not only did Herman Moore make a great catch, he was interfered with. Greg Lasseter, number 25, on the coverage. Another look. Herman Moore's the one guy you can't let up on on this Virginia team right now. Look at the interference right here and still makes the catch. Lasseter has played well lately, but he struggled early in the year, particularly in man-to-man -man coverage and the Tech coaches were a bit concerned that that might be exploited. Any question of Matt Blunden's arm, that was in the wind. From the 40 of Virginia Tech, first and 10 Cavaliers with less than three minutes to play in the first quarter. Blunden batted down, intended for the tight end Cook. Roger Garland, the linebacker, made the play, and here's Kevin Kiley. Thank you, Sean. I'm with the great quarterback from Virginia, Sean Moore. First, Sean has the hand. Uh, it's, it's progressing. Uh, about two more weeks in the cast, and I think I can start rehabbing after that. Ready for the Sugar Bowl, you think? I think I'll be ready. All right, let me ask you. You've had a lot of injuries. You're a key player on this team. Has the confidence of the Virginia team with the two losses, the injury to you, McGonagall, some of the other guys, has it been shaken? Well, I think this team has overcome a lot of adversity in the past, and I think um, you know, the younger guys realize what they have to do to win, and um, I think Blunt is doing a good job of filling in, and um, I think we'll be all right. I think we'll come through in the second half. You told me about the ball, the drop passes. What were you saying about it? Well, the balls get real, our balls get real, real hard when it gets cold, and uh, I think the receivers are having a hard time of catching it right now, but we'll be all right. All right, Sean, thanks very much. No problem. Sean, back to you. Kevin, thank you, and thanks to Sean Moore as well. You saw the graphic he was just named last week. As the first team quarterback on the Kodak All-American team, he's the first Virginia quarterback ever to be honored as the first team All-American. Sean Moore made a good point there. A lot of times what you'll do on the sideline is you'll, your ball boys will carry a bag and they'll keep some heaters in there to warm those footballs up. Uh, I don't know what's happening on Virginia side, but I put the heat up a little bit on those footballs. This third down for Virginia is third and three. Kirby didn't get there. Needed to reach the 30. He's a yard short. Now I think Virginia has to go for this one into the wind. 
The other we talked about Bruce McGonigal, the other player who's injured. He's a tight end in 1989. He had 42 receptions for 634 yards. This year he's had 17 catches for 239 yards. You take him out of the lineup. You take Sean Moore out, who's thrown 21 TDs. You've lost a big part of your offense. Fourth and one. and lost the snap. It's still free. And recovered by the Hokies, Greg Lassiter. play Matt Blunden just pull I don't think he got the football I think the center Trevor Riles just didn't get up to Matt Blunden ball bounced all around if Virginia could have recovered it there it's still been a first down but they couldn't get a hold of it Greg Laster number 25 recovers Virginia Tech ball with it was Aaron Mundy the backup tight end who had the chance to recover it for Virginia right along the 30 not, uh, 30 yard line which is where they needed to go for the first down still 108 with the win if he wants to try to air it out 14-0, Virginia Tech. Pepperin tripped up after a short game. Ron Carey, the nose guard, number 90, got a piece of him. The Virginia defense, the coordinator, Frank Spaziani, has done a great job this year. I think he's got a lot of mileage out of this defense. He's got two young linebackers in there. They've, been, they've had their injury problems. And the thing that Sean Moore does when he's in the ball game is they, they apply so much pressure to the other team that your defense really always gets to be the aggressor because you're always ahead. Now it's a reversal. Certainly the wind that has played a part in the field position advantage for the Hokies in the first quarter. Fuhrer wide open. Bo Campbell in the Virginia Territory and down at the 39-yard line. Jason Wallace made the tackle. Again, the offensive coordinator, Virginia Tech, has decided to use that win. Here's both receivers coming off against zone coverage. Watch Bo Campbell just break behind the receiver. Other receiver just clearing out. Bo Campbell makes the catch wide open. Jason Wallace makes the tackle number seven. That was a 21-yard gain. Campbell now with two receptions for 70 yards. This will likely be the final play of the first quarter. Fuhrer going for it all for Michael. Incomplete. Excellent coverage on the play by Jason Wallace. You know, the last play of the quarter, last play you got the win. They just let it go, throw it up there to try to get a home run. Their speed receiver, Marcus Michael. Jason Wallace against him, ball's thrown very well, good coverage. And that is the end of the first quarter with the score. Virginia Tech 14 and Virginia nothing. On the last play of the quarter with the win, Virginia Tech threw this deep pass to Marcus Michael. May have been interference right there by Jason Wallace to cause that incompletion. Now going into the win, look for Virginia Tech to throw a little bit shorter routes. That was the first incompletion thrown by Fury. He was five for six in the first quarter for 123 yards and a touchdown. On second and 10, they fake the reverse. Hebron dives to the 36. Here's Tim Brendo. The Iowa Hawkeyes already in the Rose Bowl would love to win this game against Minnesota. Matt Rogers, a four-yard touchdown strike off the play fake to Michael Titley, culminating a 16-play, 80-yard drive. But Minnesota still has the lead. It's been a long time since the team lost two of their last three before they went to the Rose Bowl out of the Big Ten, gentlemen. Indeed, that's correct. And Virginia's hoping to avoid losing three of four heading into the Sugar Bowl. Fuhrer on third down and seven. Complete to Kennedy for a first down. Ten-yard pickup and a first down for Virginia Tech. This afternoon's storyline from Blacksburg, Virginia. The first quarter dominated by Tech. Field position played a big part in that. 
They started at an average of their own 41. Fuhrer missed on just one pass while Blunden missed on several, largely because of four drop passes, three by Derek Dooley and one by the tight end Mark Cook. Phil Bryant, the fullback, junior from Landover, Maryland. He got down to the 22, a gain of four on first down. Virginia Tech's doing an excellent job of play calling right now. They're hitting Virginia inside. They're hitting him outside. They've thrown the deep passes with the wind. They threw the little flat pass against the wind uh, uh, to start this quarter. Uh, again, good mix. Doing a good job keeping Virginia's defense off balance. He's showing them a lot of different looks, too, so that they can't draw a beat on what they're trying to do offensively. This the seventh play of the drive. Michael in trouble and tripped up behind the line of scrimmage. Ron Carey, the nose guard, got a piece of Michael and knocked him down back at the 28. Ron Carey, the middle guard on the center, number 90. Here comes the reverse. Watch him pop up inside right here. He knows the reverse. Will Fierce going to try to come back to block him, but he forces a play inside and makes a tackle. Good misdirection reverse play that uh, the Virginia defense saw it coming, made the play. Carey, one of several graduate students on this Virginia team. He's already received his undergraduate degree in sports medicine. On third down, Fuhrer. Throws, caught! First down. Terrific leaping catch by Bo Campbell. Play. Watch the misdirection again. Watch him hold the linebackers. You see 31 and 47 hold inside. They can't get outside to help on the curl route. There's Bo Campbell calling for the ball. He just waits for it to clear. Gets up high, makes the catch. Jura's excited. He knows he's on a roll right now. Got everything going his direction. From the 11 first down, Kennedy slammed to the turf near the eight yard line gain of less than three on first down if virginia tech translates this drive into some points then they're going to be able to do some things defensively that uh, with the lead to try to go after matt blunden and take some chances that they ordinarily wouldn't take with herman moore on the field so as the virginia tech offense goes it gives their defense a little chance to do some things they like to do it will feel seven of eight 150 yards one touchdown in the first half. Kennedy got to the five. Tech can pick up a first down for Frank Beamer at the one yard line without scoring a touchdown. The routes that Virginia Tech is throwing because of the play action. They're holding the linebackers. And the linebackers are unable to get under the curl route on the outside. Virginia may have to try to blitz them a little bit more, try to get some movement out of the front five to try to get some pressure on Fuhrer. On the ground on third and four, and Kennedy won't get there. James Pearson, the inside linebacker, number 47, made the initial hit for the Cavaliers. And again, it's decision time for Frank Beamer. And he's made that decision as Mickey Thomas comes on the field. He's going to go with a field goal here to try to get up 17-0. Thomas, a sophomore from Dublin, Virginia, is out of Pulaski County High School. His predecessor here at Tech as the field goal kicker, Chris Kinzer, was from the same town and the same high school. Watch the pressure from inside from Virginia. Try to get their hands up, try to block it. 21-yarder is good. 10-17 to play in the first half. It is still all Virginia Tech. Beautiful Blacksburg, Virginia, and setting on the regular season for both the Hokies and Cavaliers. And at the moment, it's the Finally, their team is in possession of a 17-0 lead. Virginia Tech, as I talked about their play selection, they've had 16 runs and eight passes. They've had great mix so far in this particular ball game. They've kept the defense of Virginia off balance. Now, as I said before, they can put some pressure on Matt Blunden. Virginia has had nine runs and seven passes. Brian Reeves to kick off. 
His first kickoff into the win. He decides to split it. Taken by the up man, Dave Sweeney. And he's down at the 32-yard line. An excellent lineup of college football next Saturday coming your way. We'll be in San Diego. Tough assignment for Mike and myself as we watch Dan McGuire and San Diego State take on the number two Miami Hurricanes. That's at 4 Eastern time. That'll be about a four-hour game. Plenty of passes if you're a fan of the passing attack. Then the battle of the state of Florida. Florida and Florida State. Gators can't go to a bowl game. You can bet their game with the eight-ranked Seminoles will be their bowl game as far as they're concerned. Best field position for Virginia today. Now he gets a chance to throw with a win, Matt Blunden. On the ground on first down, and on the ground is Nicky Fisher. Tripped up by Brian Campbell behind the line of scrimmage. There was a flag on the play. We'll tell you about it after Tim updates you on college football scores. Sean, the Cotton Bowl is now set. Texas beats Baylor today, 23-13. to That's the first time they've gone to the Cotton Bowl since they lost to Georgia in 84. They were unbeaten, had a chance for the national championship, you'll recall, under Freddie Akers. So they are in. They will take on Miami in the Cotton Bowl game. And don't forget, you'll be able to see Miami and Syracuse later tonight. Let's get back to Sean and Mike. Mike, I think Texas might be playing the best football in the country right now. I think they should be rated higher than they are right now. You can't be ranked sixth to where they're at right now and have beaten uh, some of the teams that they've beaten. They should be higher. Virginia just picked up a penalty, so they've, they've now second down 13 yards. It was an illegal procedure call against the Cavaliers. With another flag down, this flag will stop the play. Running through it, but the play will not stand. And again, it looked like there was movement, this time on the left side of the Virginia offensive line. Well, Virginia's offensive line has worked the entire season with Sean Moore. Matt Blunden. We have a dead ball foul. False start on the offense. Matt Bundens played 88 plays, so he calls the signals a little different. And even though he's had a week to practice, you get in game situations sometimes, that could be the reason for the movement by Ray Roberts, number 72. Just not used to Matt Blunden enough. Mm -hmm. George Welsh knows he has to make something happen right now. Behind 17 to nothing, on the road, he has to get something going. And the man who brought in the play, Herman Moore, is the Cavalier most likely to make something happen. He's going to have to do it with two on him. Playing a box and one, just like basketball on him. Second down, 18. On the ground with Fisher. He drives out to the 31. Just about where this drive began, they'll still need 11 on third down to keep this possession alive. But the outside linebackers and the wide tackle six do the two in people on defense and line of scrimmage will read the offensive tackle stance. If he feels like it's a stance that he's given away a pass, then they'll go in, make a move, and go outside and play the pass. If they think they're really heavy and they got their stance and their hand and their weight forward, they'll move inside to try to help on the run. Four receivers and one back for Virginia on third and 11. Over the middle, the receivers are tangled up with one of the officials. Very Cooley went down. As he was trying to avoid contact with the official over the middle, the umpire, and the pass fell incomplete. Matt Blunden's looking for Derek Dooley all the way. The inside linebacker is blitzing. Derek Dooley just fell down, couldn't make the catch. They brought Rusty Pendle to number 40, the inside linebacker, to try to pressure Matt Blunden. Ed Garneau to punt it away to Marcus Michael. 17-0 Virginia Tech. Nearly midway through the second quarter. Line drive kick. Michael has a posse along the near sideline. He's out of bounds at the 46 of Virginia. A 36-yard punt, but a 21-yard return for Michael. We'll return to Blacksburg after this. Sean McDonald with Mike Gottfried and Kevin Kiley. In Blacksburg, Virginia, where Virginia Tech leads 17 to nothing. You're looking at today's ITT Hartford student athlete of the game. He is Virginia Tech senior split end, number 48, Nick Cullen. He carries a 3.27 grade point average as a finance major. Performing well in the classroom and also on the field. He came into 
this season with 33 receptions. He has 36 this year, including 13 this year against Southern Mississippi. Excellent possession receiver. On first down, flag flies, and Hebron got forward for about a gain of two. We'll check out the flag. It is an ACC officiating crew, and it is an illegal procedure call against Virginia Tech. Well, Virginia Tech's like an orphan. You know, they don't have a league affiliation. We have holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty, still first down. Check out a holding call from the referee, Dale Phillips. They're in the Metro Conference, which is pretty well to be disbanded, but when they play ACC teams, they have ACC officials. When they play Southern Mississippi, Florida State, they use the Southern Independent officials. So they really are always using different officiating groups. So Frank Beamer knows a little bit about officiating. And Frank is hoping for an alliance with the Big East. He hopes that Tech will be a part of that Big East football conference that is being formed. And if Tech is a part of it, that will be a big boost to the Virginia Tech football program. Fuhrer dumps it over the middle to Greg Daniels, the tight end. He's back into Virginia territory, down at the 47. James Pearson made the tackle. Here's the Metro Conference, Sean. You see Florida State left the ACC. Cincinnati, Memphis State went to the big Midwest in basketball. South Carolina, the SAC. Virginia Tech needs to align with somebody. It'd be nice if the ACC would take them in. It'd be nice if the Big Eight would take Louisville in. The SEC would take in Southern Miss, and the Southwest Conference would take Tulane in. But that's not going to happen. Of course, the Metro has not been a football conference. That's been an excellent basketball league. Now that has fallen apart. Michael Sturdivant with his first catch of the game. He's to the 38, two yards short of a first down. He's a junior from New Haven, Connecticut, and his uncle is Floyd Little, the three-time All-American running back at Syracuse. Good bloodlines. Here you see Will Fuhrer again throwing into the wind. Everything's short now. Three-step drop, little hitch pattern. Michael Sturdivant, which makes the catch, puts him in a good situation, third and short. Seventh catch of the year for Sturdivant in his first year at Tech after two seasons at Dean Junior College in Massachusetts. From the 38, third and two. Hebron, first down. Talk again about Virginia Tech. What they may have to do is join a basketball conference on one end and go as an independent football. I think that's the same fate is going to face Louisville and it's going to face uh, Tulane in Southern Mississippi. Or maybe Tulane Southern Mississippi could get in the Sun Belt in basketball and be an independent football. That's the only choice they have right now, those four schools. I think Tech feels that the Big East needs to bring in other football schools. Draw play. And a gain of six on first down. Mike Hodges, the backup fullback with his first carry. And here's Tim Brando. Gentlemen, Minnesota continues to spank Rose Bowl bound Iowa. Watch Markel Fleetwood to Keswick Joyner. Joyner, by the way, the same guy that blocked the punt for a touchdown earlier in the game. Oh, the Golden Gophers lead by two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. And here it's Tech by 17 points in the second quarter. Tim and Lee have talked about those bowl matchups, and uh, they're not, not very good, so maybe something will be done about that. Looked like perhaps the center, Jim Pine, forgot the snap count. Everybody was in motion, but the ball wasn't snapped. The start offense. <laughs> Here's a replay. Everybody's moving except the football. <laughs> Tim Pine says, oh, my gosh, I hope they didn't get that on camera. They think Pine's going to be a great player. He's a true freshman. The starter at center for a great football family. His grandfather and father played professional football. His two brothers played college football. His brother George was the captain at Brown University. Record incompletion, looking for the tight end, Daniels. The coverage from Tony Covington. And it's third and ten upcoming for Will Fuhrer and the Virginia Tech offense. There's Jim Pine, the freshman from Milford, Massachusetts. Watch him on pass protection here. Being a freshman, they're going to try to help him a little bit and double on the nose guard. You see the left guard come over and help him also, Glenn Watts. So they get two people on the nose guard to help Jim Pine. He's from the same high school as Howie Long, and he broke Howie Long's weightlifting records, all of them. 
at Milford High School in Massachusetts. Now Fuhrer wants a timeout. 5.28 remaining till halftime. It's the Hokies with a 17-0 advantage. Virginia Tech 17, Virginia nothing. It was 14 nothing after the first quarter. The Hokies have added a field goal by Mickey Thomas in the second quarter. And now they're looking at third down and 10 at the 33 of Virginia. Well, because of the win situation, they may be thinking in terms of two downs here to try to pick up 10 yards. See what they give on the first down here. Fuhrer. Going for the end zone. Touchdown! Great catch by the tight end, Daniels. Tony Covington. Mickey Thomas makes it 24 nothing Virginia Tech. <laughs> Junior from Hopewell, Virginia. Greg Daniels with his fourth touchdown reception of the year. The Tech coaches say he's not very big for a tight end, but he has excellent speed and he's a good pass receiver and he showed both of those attributes on that catch. Well, he's an in-betweener. He's not big enough to be the strong blocker you need, but he has good speed and with his size can get down the field and make those type of catches. George Welsh knows that he's got a tough way to come back here under the circumstances. There was a very despondent George Welsh with whom we met last night. He said despite the success they had early on, lately most of the focus around Charlottesville has been on the disappointment. They've lost two of their last three. And it's really sad to see somebody who's had the kind of year George Welsh has had seem to be a little bit down. But he said, yes, right now he's feeling disappointment more than well, anything. He's an excellent coach. He's got an excellent staff. He has nothing to be ashamed of. His team is an outstanding team. You cannot take Bruce McGonigal, the tight end, with all the catches he makes, and take Sean Moore out of the ball game and not see an effect on the rest of the team. What you're seeing now is not a fact Matt, Matt Glennon's not coming through. He's playing well. But the other people on the football team are reacting to Sean Moore's injury. Reeves with another kickoff. Larry Holmes from the 11. Trying to go across the field. He went down to the 23. Carl Borden made the tackle on special teams for Virginia Tech. The latest scoring drive for Tech covered 46 yards. It took three minutes and six seconds. And Daniels, who came to Virginia Tech as a quarterback, Caught the aerial from the QB Fuhrer, who, as Mike points out, has missed on just two passes today. 24 0 Hokies. Well, this is a big series right here for Virginia if they want to stay in this football game with 5 13 and the wind at their back. Let's try to get the ball to Herman Moore, even though he's going to be doubled. Dumped off to the fullback. Dave Sweeney out of bounds with a Virginia first down at the 35-yard line. Blunden now three of nine, and here's Tim. Sean, the numbers keep growing for Ty Detmer. In fact, with this touchdown pass to Chris Smith of 13 yards, Detmer will vault to 4,826 yards in a single season passing Andre Ware. That is an NCAA record set by Detmer. 45 to 10. It could become the Tiesman after all. Indeed it could. We look forward to seeing Ty Detmer in the Holiday Bowl on December 29th. You'll see it here on ESPN against Texas A&M. <laughs> on first down, Blunden. Hit as he threw, it's incomplete. Another ball right through the hands of a receiver. This time it was Aaron Mundy. Five drops now, and that has George Welsh understandably agitated. Jimmy Witten put the hit on Blunden as he threw. Jimmy Witten comes from his defensive tackle spot. You see here, see what Herman Moore is facing down here at the bottom. He's drawing a crowd. Not only is the outside backer, the inside backer, the free safety, they all know where he's at. 
they've got him in a phone book, phone booth right now covered. And there's a sack on Matt Blunden. Witten, a regular appearer on the field for Tech. Today is his 44th consecutive start. Under pressure on second and 10. The catch made by Kirby. He's thrown down at the 42-yard line. Rusty Pendleton made the tackle. Just a little screen pass type play to Terry Kirby. I see Matt Blunden go back to pass here. He's just going to flip the ball to on a little screen pass to Terry Kirby. Lets his lineman get downfield. Rusty Pendleton, number 40, comes up, makes the play along with Archie Hopkins, number 37, puts him in a third and three situation. Critical down right here for Virginia to stay in this football game. They trail 24 to nothing with just more than four minutes left in the first half. London to Herman Moore, his second catch. He's on the move into Tech territory and down at the 43-yard line, a 16-yard pickup, and now two receptions for 60 yards for Herman Moore. Good call by Gary Tranquil, the offensive coordinator. And now they have to move Herman Moore around. Here you see him in motion. Now they can't double him. He can get off the ball free. Here he comes off. They clear out. He just does a little under route. They get the ball to him, gets up the field. They're going to have to do more of that where they move him around so that they can take away people on his head where they're knocking him at the line of scrimmage. When you move him around in motion, he gets the free release down the field, and they can't double it. Herman Moore, a junior, but he's just a few credits shy of being able to graduate this year. And if you saw the feature about Herman on game day today, you know that he's seriously considering the possibility of leaving school and turning pro after this season. 24-0 Hokies. We're coming right back. We're back in Blacksburg, home of the Hokies. The Hokies also known as the Gobblers. That seems appropriate on this weekend. The Tech performance has been anything but a turkey to this point. They lead 24 to nothing. Virginia has just picked up a first down just outside the 42 of Virginia Tech. London under pressure. Throws caught. Herman Moore inside the 20 and down at the 18-yard line. Tyrone Drakeford saved the touchdown for Virginia Tech. Well, Mike Clark, the defensive coordinator of Virginia Tech, is going to bring some pressure here, which is going to allow... Herman Moore for the first time today to be one-on-one, -on -one, and that's not the situation you want if you're Virginia Tech. He gets in a one-on-one -on -one situation, they're going to get him the football. They took a chance on the blitz. It didn't work that time, but you have to try to keep Matt Blunden off balance. They're starting to find Moore. From the 18, first down, quick hitter. Holmes bounced off a couple of tacklers and went down at the six. Darwin Herdman made the tackle. But Larry Holmes has another first down for the Cavaliers. Two thousand four hundred and eighty four career reception yards now for Herman Moore. He has broken John Ford's career school record. Now here's where you have to watch Herman Moore on the fade route in the corner. First and goal Kirby sliced through the middle and got inside the two. Just an isolation inside. They got the ball to Terry Kirby with good lead block by Dave Sweeney. Look at Matt Blunden here. You try to pound it in. You try to use this down to pound it in. If you can't, then you're going to have to try to get it to Herman Moore. The only time Virginia has failed inside the 10, their final possession last week in the loss to Maryland. Again, Kirby. Again, he is stopped short of the goal line. He reached the one third and goal upcoming. Now with two minutes remaining in the first half. To be a champion team, you have to play good goal line defense and you have to get penetration. See the Virginia Tech helmets getting up the field and making the hit on Terry Kirby just as he gets to the line of scrimmage. And that's what you have to do in goal line defense. Get lower than the offensive line and get up the football field. With Matt Blunden size, I wouldn't be surprised to try quarterback sneak. 
third and goal. This is the ninth play of the Virginia drive. They try the fullback. Virginia players signaling touchdown, but the officials are not. Gary Steele went rushing to the right, but he was stopped short. Watch the defensive helmets. There he comes inside of Ray Roberts to make the play. Jerome Preston beat the block of the offensive tackle. Virginia's going to take a timeout with a fourth down in one situation, and this is the biggest play of the ball game for Virginia. They have to get a touchdown. Tech over the years has been an excellent defensive team. The graphic you just saw demonstrates their success defensively this year. They've allowed just one touchdown in the last 10 quarters. Beamer himself was a defensive player here at Virginia Tech. He was a defensive back and a 1969 graduate of Virginia Tech. This, this is a good job for him. I mean, he wanted to come back to Virginia Tech, so he's right for this job. And something Frank Beamer will want to do tomorrow, along with the rest of football fans around the nation, is tune into ESPN for the best coverage of the NFL. Game day gets you ready for all the game's action at noon Eastern time. And then primetime wraps up all the day's games at 7 Eastern time. That'll be followed by our Sunday night football presentation of the NFL, the Seattle Seahawks against the San Diego Chargers. Two teams battling to get into the playoffs, but two teams that need a win in that one to have a realistic shot at it. Are you talking about a big call here for Gary Tranquil in the offense? He's being the offensive coordinator, he's tried three plays inside. I think he's got to give the ball to Terry Kirby with a lead block or quarterback sneak it. Fourth and goal. Blunden dropped the football, flagged down on the play. Doesn't matter who recovered, Tech is going to get it anyway if the play stands, but there is a flag. They may have blow that dead and give him a fourth down play. He may have moved soon enough that the whistle blew that they give him the fourth down play again. I think they'll give him the play over again. Got a dead ball foul. False start on the offense. Still fourth down. Still fourth down situation. Watch the right side of the offensive line, the movement by the right guard, number 58, Jeff Tomlin. Mm -hmm. So once that movement came about, the play was dead. So now it's fourth and goal from just outside the five. And Virginia trailing 24 to nothing, doesn't have much of a choice. Field goal doesn't cut very much into this big Virginia Tech lead. I think what they have to do now is roll Matt Blunden out a little bit, and try to get him to a two receiver side, try to find Herman Moore or Derek Dooley on the run. Roll to the right is exactly what I think they'll do here. Now the officials stop the play. Timeout called by Virginia Tech. That is the final timeout for the Hokies. Virginia Tech called timeout, Sean. They were in a goal line defense, needed to substitute because Virginia came in with three receivers, so they wisely called the timeout. Frank Beamer got it from the sideline so they can make their substitutions. We hope you'll stay tuned for our Rayovac halftime report. Tim Brando and Lee Corso with scores and highlights from around college football. As the regular season winds toward its close, but still plenty of storylines to discover and report on. Not discover, I think we've discovered just about every storyline there has been in college football, and there have been plenty of them. One of the storylines here in Blacksburg, Mike, is the presence of the representatives of the Sugar Bowl. We have been told that regardless of how Virginia fares today, they will be extended an invitation to the Sugar Bowl. But can't imagine those bowl people will feel good about that invitation if Virginia loses this football game and goes down into New Orleans 8-3. Well, Tim and Lee have talked about this for the last couple of weeks, the bowl games. It's something that will be debated for a long time until we have a playoff. But Virginia will probably have Sean Moore back for the bowl game. Bruce McGonigal, maybe uh, they'll get him back. There's John Rivers. He is usually a flanker. Six foot five. He's playing for the first time this year on defense. The Tech coaches say that they feel with his size and leaping ability in a goal line situation, he's a good cover man to run with Herman Moore. What is football coming to? We got two basketball. We got a basketball game now. Look for the roll out right. Rivers is indeed a member of the Virginia Tech basketball team. London under pressure, incomplete. Looking for Dooley, the pass was short. Now there's a flag in the end zone. 
Well, if that's pass interference, that'll give him a first down. And keep this drive alive, which it looked to me like it was pass interference in the corner. Frank is not sure. Frank, you need to back off the field a little bit. Yes, you do. Or you'll get one of those five-yard technical <laughs> penalties. That you have been advocating, but as far as we know, it has not yet been added yes. to the rule book. One thing about Frank Beamer, having worked with him for a couple years, he's under control. He's mm -hmm. under control on the sideline, and uh, he's an excellent sideline coach. Uh, there's not any way this guy can explain this right to him. Mm -hmm. None. No matter what he tells him. When you're a coach on the sideline, I'm holding on the defense since it was a pass play. That's an automatic first down. And as we mentioned, you know that it's an ACC officiating crew. Do you already start in somewhat of a bad mood relative to the officials when you know they're out of the conference of your opposition? I did. As soon as I saw the officials, I got in a bad mood, <laughs> no matter where they were. But you see here the holding. Derek Dooley's right, caught right in between those two defenders. John one of Rivers. Defenders was Rivers, the man we just mentioned, the basketball player. He did not suit up last night for Virginia Tech as they won their season opener against BMI. Now they, since they weren't able to pound the ball, and they're going to try to throw it in now. First and goal from the three. Double pass, touchdown. Good call. Terry Kirby takes it in from three yards out. And Virginia is on the board. It's now 24 to 6, and it looks like George Welsh will play for one point. Important touchdown for Virginia. A good call. What they did was come in with four receivers, so they made them defend the field. Here you see only one back, Terry Kirby. Shows pass. Now watch the little underneath kick here on the on the play and the lead block by Roberts. And the touchdown on the shovel pass. Matt Blunt, a nice job faking out. See, look to the right. Here shovels the ball. Terry Kirby had a little trouble with it, brought it in, touchdown. Now they're thinking about going for two. Yes, they are. Terry Kirby, another basketball player who doubles as a football player. Perhaps he's a football player doubling as a basketball player, depending upon your perspective. He takes it in, his 11th touchdown in all. That's a receiving touchdown on a forward pass. His fourth <laughs> touchdown of the year as a receiver. George Welsh set out Jake McInerney, the place kicker but you saw an animated conversation with Tom Moore one of his assistants and it looks like they're reconsidering that decision. Well he only has one choice he has to go for two you need to get on uh, unless they're coming in with an extra point kicker now it just feels like he needs to but once you want what you want to try to do is always get in where you're only a couple touchdowns behind but uh, he's going to with that drive that he had here he's going to bring the field goal extra point kicker in and go for the one. But he used a timeout to do exactly what he intended to do originally, and that is kick the extra point. Well, maybe with the new quarterback, he just felt like percentages of that last drive of what happened, that he'd be best served to get the extra point here and make it 24 to 7, be behind 17 points at this particular time, take some momentum in at halftime. Jake McInerney perfect throughout his career in point after touchdowns. He's 88 for 88. That's a school record for consecutive PATs. Virginia kickers haven't missed a PAT since 1985. They've made 174 straight. And that string comes to an end. It's blocked. That's one of the specialties for the Hokies. They've now blocked at least one kick in seven of their last nine games. Johnny Rivers appeared to be the man who blocked this one. If it was Rivers, it would be his third blocked PAT. Well, they have two big, tall players inside. John Rivers being one at 6'5". Look at them both get up and block that extra point. Here you see the left side of your screen. Watch the pressure inside because, again, without the tee, the elevation doesn't get off as high as they like it right off the ball and they put the tallest player they could inside to block that. George would like to have that back. I think he'd have went for two. Mm -hmm. That is the first missed extra point by Virginia since November 2nd, 1985 when in the final game of the regular season that year, Kenny Stadlin had one blocked by West Virginia. Kirby and Blunden play basketball and football. We talked with coach Jeff Jones about it. Coach Jones, which is more important. Of, of Terry is, is a bonus, but we can't count on a whole lot. Uh, with Matt, uh, uh, despite the fact that you know that we don't have him right now, almost 
the first minute he steps out onto the basketball floor, he's going to play a major role uh, on our basketball team. And the question remains, what will Kirby and Blunden do following this game? George Welsh said he wasn't sure if Terry Kirby would go back now to basketball and practice them for a while, then come back to football for the bowl game, or if he would just stay with football. Kirby scored the touchdown, but George was a little bit more emphatic about Matt Blunden. He said he might have to be the quarterback in the bowl game. I don't know if he can go to basketball. We need him to practice with football to get ready for the Sugar Bowl. I hate to break this to Coach Jones, but I think they're going to stay here in this football. You're going to Sugar Bowl. They're going to probably keep him right in practice, especially since one of them's your quarterback, and you're going to need him in that game maybe. Jeff Jones coached his first game as Virginia basketball coach last night and beat Sienna by three without Kirby and Blunden. That was Vaughn Hebron with the carry. And he has a Virginia Tech first down out at the 30, 54 seconds left in the half. Neither team has any timeouts, so I think Virginia Tech will just try to run it out. Here's a toss sweep. Vaughn Hebron breaks up inside, picks up good yardage, stops the clock, but I think Virginia Tech will just be satisfied to run it out here. Hebron to the 35, P.J. Killian made the tackle, the freshman from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. John, I think when your quarterback's so important to this Virginia team and they're going to the Sugar Bowl, I just think that George will try to work something out, but he has to have him practice because if Sean Moore doesn't get back to the bowl game, Matt Blunden's going to take every snap down there in the Sugar Bowl. So I would expect George Welsh would probably say to Coach Jones, I need him mm -hmm. a little bit more right now. Tech content to run out the clock. They'll go to the dressing room with an 18-point halftime lead. At the half, Virginia Tech leads 24 to 6. We invite you to stay tuned for the Railback halftime report. As we go back to Sean and Mike, gentlemen, you know it's incredible. You could see this score coming a week ago, and Mike, you were all over it earlier today. No surprise, is it? No, indeed. I think watching these two teams on film the last couple of days and preparing for this football game, Mike, we knew Virginia Tech is a better football team than many people around the country are aware of. Well, everything's right for Virginia Tech in this ball game. There's a wind in this particular field right now that's going to play a factor in the second half. You see in the first half, Will Fuhrer throws a long pass. He took advantage of the wind. Here's a play action where he fakes the ball to the right, and he hits Bo Campbell down the hash. When you have the wind, you have to take advantage of it. Virginia will have the wind. They'll be kicking off, and they'll use the wind in the third quarter. They have to use the wind to get back in the game. On the other side of the field, Herman Moore, watch. He's got three people on him. The outside backer, here comes the inside backer. There's a safety. The corner's off of him. They've got him almost triple teamed on every play. Virginia will have to move him around to get him a free release to get him open. Moore had three catches in the first half. Here's Kevin Kiley. Thank you very much, Sean. No. Frank Beamer, Will Fuhrer, quarterback, first half. He had a great first half. Yeah, he did. I, we played very well in the uh, first half. I thought we really got after him. We're going to uh, need that same effort here in the second half. Uh, they've got plenty of weapons, and we got to uh, answer their challenge here in the second half. I promise you that. Uh, I don't know that most of the country doesn't realize that you have you had a lead on Georgia Tech and Florida State in the second half, didn't you? Yeah, we did, and uh, we need to hold this. So we need to keep this lead, I can tell you. All right, thanks, Frank. Back us there. Thank you, Kevin. Virginia will kick off. Michael Husted handles the kickoff duty. But as Mike mentions, Virginia will have the wind at its back in the third quarter. They'll need to do some damage with the wind in this quarter. They're going to have to take some chances on defense, especially with the wind. They're going to have to come after Virginia Tech. Great kick by Husted. In the air through the back of the end zone. It was primarily a passing first half for both sides. Blunden, 8 of 15, with four drops. He could have had a huge first half for the Cavaliers. Fuhrer missed on only two. Rushing yardage slightly in favor of Tech, and field position was a factor. Tech took the win to start. That was a good move. It was a good move. Good move by Frank Beamer right off the bat. Now, this is going to be a key quarter. The first four minutes of the third quarter will determine the outcome of this football game. If Virginia can get back in this game, they're going to have to play inspired defense right now. On first and ten, draw play. Vaughn Hebron 
picks up six. Hebron was not the starter. Kennedy was, but Tony left with a bruised right shoulder, and the Tech folks aren't sure if he will return. Tech punted on its first possession, then four straight scores. Two touchdowns, a field goal, and another touchdown. They let the clock tick off just before the half. Excellent field position, except for the last play where they got the ball on the 20-yard line at halftime. Excellent field position for Virginia Tech. On second down, Hebron picks up the first down. Ten more for Vaughn Hebron out to the 36. The Virginia Tech coaches would like nothing more than a nice long drive here with the, with the wind in their face. Injury on the play. James Pearson, the inside linebacker, sophomore from Alexandria, Virginia, is the injured player. He's an excellent student majoring in Russian studies. He was president of his Russian club in high school for two years. He's also been an artist for the Cavalier Daily student newspaper. Watch the isolation right here on James Pearson, the fullback, number 40, 29, Phil Bryan just takes it to him and uh, see him try to come off the block and make the play. He has to attack the fullback a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage. Phil Bryan took the fight to him there, may have hit him in the arm. Pearson heads off. Trying to shake out the cobwebs. He was moved to inside from outside linebacker this year. Sometimes when it's cool like this, you get a little stinger. And that looks like what he has. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see him back in a couple plays. And Virginia has to make something happen on defense. First and 10 tech. He played 42 seconds in the second half. Draw play. Stopped nicely. Here's Kevin Kiley. Thank you, Sean. We talked about Virginia Tech tailback uh, Tony Kennedy. He started the game. That bruised shoulder is now a separated shoulder. They discovered it at halftime. He's not dressed to play, and he will not play in the second half. Back upstairs. As we could see with Kennedy right behind Kevin, standing on top of the bench without his shoulder pads on. Well, they're very fortunate they got Vaughn, Vaughn Hepburn back at this time because of losing Tony Kennedy now. But some kind of play action pass here. Misdirection. Not going to keep it on the ground. Bryant lost four on first down. Hebron gets that back and perhaps one more to the 37 yard line. You see the linebacker James Pearson. Doctors checking him over. And whether he'll return in this ball game or not, we'll wait and see. Defensive coordinator Frank Spaziani described Pearson as tough and smart. I can't tell you how great a job Frank Spaziani, the defensive coach, is what kind of job. I think Frank's being mentioned for some jobs, uh, and, and people who are looking for coaches would be wise to look in his direction. He's a bright young guy defensively, as, as are many young and bright uh, coordinators across the country. Joe Hall being helped off. He doesn't appear to be seriously injured, and that's good news. Have to get him out of the lineup. Today is his 32nd consecutive start for George Will. The last two times on third down that Virginia Tech had the ball, they ran a play-action pass and brought a receiver, either Nick Cullen inside or the other receiver on a hook pattern, held the linebackers with play-action. Here they're going to sprint out. And it's overthrown. Intended for Hebron, who is an excellent receiver, out of the backfield, but the pass was too high for him. And for one of the few times today, Bill Fuhrer in the Virginia Tech offense is stopped by the Virginia defense. Basha has only had to punt once. That was with the wind after the first Tech possession. And he kicked it 58 yards into the end zone. This would be a good time to go after the kick because into the wind, you can't get much of a return unless he really gets a thump on the football and kicks it to you. Short, wobbly kick. Jason Wallace returned one for a touchdown last week. He's heading in the wrong direction this week. Now he's outside with blockers. And goes out of bounds at the 33-yard line. If he had been able to beat one more defender, he had plenty of running room along the sideline. Virginia goes on offense, trailing by 18. ESPN's presentation of CFA football, Virginia versus Virginia Tech, is being brought to you by Jeep. There's only one Jeep. And by Pizza Hut, home of pan pizza that's winning the hearts of America. Pizza Hut, making it great. We 
We've seen a lot of Pizza Huts traveling with pizza lover Mike Gottfried this fall, along with Mike, Sean McDonough, and Kevin Kiley in Blacksburg, Virginia. It's always been a weakness. <laughs> First and ten for Matt Blunt in the Cavalier offense. They started their own 32, trailing 24 to 6. Kirby. Nice bounce to the outside, and he's close to a first down at the 42-yard line. Sean, with the way they're doubling up Herman Moore, you'd think that Derek Dooley would be able to get in situations, one-on-one -on -one situations, that they'd be able to get the ball to him. Terry Kirby, first sophomore in Virginia to rush for 1,000-plus yards, as you said earlier, basketball player also. Talented athlete, was very highly recruited. Penn State felt they had a shot at him before he chose Virginia. He was the national high school player of the year as a senior at Tab High School in Tab, Virginia. As they measure, it's short of a first down. It would appear. It is. And here's Kevin Kyler. Thank you, Sean. James Pearson, number 47, injured just a few moments ago. Mike, you were right. He had a burner in his shoulder. Doc says he's fine. He'll be back in. Joe Hall was hurt right after Pearson. He, too, is fine. They'll both be back in the game. Back upstairs, guys. Thank you, Kevin. You can coach. You're a terrific announcer. And you're also a medical specialist. I wouldn't want to operate on anybody else. Second and inches. This might be a throwaway down where you try to go for something deeper, try to get to Herman Moore, but they, it's going to be tough to get to him unless you move him around. They do look to pass and deep in the direction of Terrence Tomlin. It's intercepted. Tyrone Drakeford. Brings it back to the 34-yard line. Hey, you talk about second and short. It's a lot of offenses will try to go downtown on that. That's what Matt Blunden tried to do. Play action fake. He's going to try to hit Terrence Tomlin, number two. Seem in pretty good shape. It's just maybe thrown underneath, but I'm going to tell you something. Tyrone Drexford with a great interception. And then watch the blocking now form. You practice this. Here comes the blocks. They have to block high. You see all the block symbol, and they take it to the sideline. Great interception. Drakeford's second interception of the year. He's a freshman from Camden, South Carolina, who came to Tech from Fort Union Military Academy here in the state of Virginia, a school that has produced many fine college football players. 5'10", 175-pound freshman. That was a big interception for him. Sean Moore offering words of advice for Matt Blunden. Blunden's first interception today second of the season second and seven for the Hokies in the flat complete Bo Campbell couldn't break the tackle of Wallace if he did it might have been see you later but Jason Wallace made the tackle and it's very close to a first down they ran a pick play watch the outside receiver come inside and pick that is a designated pick play Marcus Michael came in, picked Keith McNeese, and uh, we're seeing more and more basketball out here. Bo Kim on reception. Not a legal play when you actually go to pick, but probably what he was trying to do is just get in position there, which would make it a legal play. Back to the ground with the fullback, Phil Bryant. Offensive coordinator Steve Marshall says Bryant is small and undersized for a fullback, but he's been a very pleasant surprise to the Virginia Tech Hokies this year. Hasn't been anything pleasant about today's proceedings for George Welsh. One thing about now as a football coach, you've been through a long, gut-wrenching season, and I think George is feeling the effects of that. He was number one. He told us last night, don't ever make me number one again for the <laughs> week of the season. We asked George, who do you think should be number one right now? He said, I have no idea. Nor did he seem to care. He said he'd leave that up to the poultry. Sure. On the money to Vaughn Hebron. He's short of a first down, but into Virginia territory at the 47. What Virginia Tech did there was just take Vaughn Hebron out of the backfield, place him out as a wide receiver. Virginia didn't cover him. He just raised up and threw the ball to him for a quick five-yard gain, six-yard gain. Virginia Tech just wants to eat the time of this quarter so they can get the win in the fourth quarter. Take the wind away from Virginia. Hebron has the first down. 
strong run for Vaughn Hebron. He finally went down to the 38-yard line. Watch Virginia Tech's offensive line come off the ball on the left side here. Mark Verniel, number 71. Look at the block by the running back, Phil Bryant. They are manhandling Virginia at the line of scrimmage right now, and this drive is so important for Virginia. They cannot allow them to eat this clock up. Hebron came into today's game as the leading rusher for the season for Virginia Tech, despite the fact that he has missed 14 of their last 16 quarters of action. Corner blitz, and they run away from it. Short gain for Lamar Smith. Here's Tim Brando. 17, the final score in the game. Pitt will finish 3-7-1. That is their worst record since 1984. Penn State closes with nine straight wins going into the Blockbuster Bowl, and you know they're rooting for Florida State to knock off Florida next week to have both teams riding a heat wave going into that Blockbuster Bowl game. Could be a Blockbuster. <laughs> Aptly named Bowl. Virginia Tech moving the ball and doing a good job taking time off the clock. Lamar Smith tripped up by P.J. Killian. They'll spot Smith down inside the 35 and just short of the 34 for a gain of about five yards. Here's the type of play where you roll to the wide side now and try to get Nick Cullen on a curl route after a, a play action in this next play. Third down situation. They've run the ball very well. Good play action pass here to hold the backers. Third and six. Seventh play of this drive for Tech, and it looks like Fuhrer is changing the play. Look for Michael. He was very fortunate it was not picked off. Benson Goodwin stepped right in front of the intended receiver, and he nearly walked away with it. It's going to be an interesting call for Frank Beamer. Do you punt the football right here? I do, but uh, let's see what he does. I try to punt him in the hole. The defense has played well, and that's what they're going to do. Here's Will Fury. He talked about the checkoff that he just ran, and I'm sure Frank's going to give him maybe another play to run the next time when he sees that defensive look. Bosch has had a good day punting. Trying to make it a great day as he angles to the sideline. It took a bounce. There were three cover men down there for Tech, but it bounced away from all three of them. Tough break for the Hokies. Cavaliers start at their 20-yard line, trailing 24-6. Virginia dodged a bullet right here on this punch. Watch the punt. What you'd like to do is all your defenders to get the three people to get to the goal line and spread out and play shortstop and do not let that ball in the end zone. Big break for Virginia that that ball get in there. Eight oh one to play third quarter. 24 to 6 Virginia Tech. Virginia still with the wind at its back. The end around and it's Terrence Tomlin with blockers. One of the few people who had a chance to make the tackle was Archie Hopkins, and he did, holding Tomlin, who is the speed of the offense for Virginia, to an 11 yard game. I'll tell you this if Archie Hopkins wouldn't have made this play, you might have been able to write down some points here. Watch the fake right here again by Matt Blunden. Good fake to the tailback. Here comes Tomlin around on the reverse. We'll pick up Archie Hopkins, number 37. He's Look at all the blockers. Archie Hopkins comes off a block and makes the play. Big play for Arch Archie Hopkins. Hopkins transferred to Tech from Brown in the Ivy League. Cavs go to the run for very short yardage. Gary Steele picked up a yard as he went straight ahead behind big number 67, Paul Collins. Virginia's best offensive lineman is Ray Roberts. Most of the time they'll run over him, number 72. He's six foot six, 300 pounds, about the size of George Foreman. And they like to go over him. They like to run. Here they've got a, a situation where they're moving the tight end around and running formation in the boundary. Second and a long seven. It's nearly eight yards to go. London going deep. Caught. See you later, Herman Moore. Flag down. Back near the line of scrimmage. On the defense, the penalty is declined. Custody score. 
Yes, he did score, Dale Phillips. It is a touchdown. John, they probably will go for two right now here if they set it up. Herman Moore with a 66-yard TD reception. Watch the defense. Now watch him go to Herman Moore. They've got two people on him, but number 22, Tyrone Drakeford, just under runs the play, and Herman Moore with a great catch for the touchdown. See a second look, Matt Blunden. What a throw. Watch this catch. Reach out there, make that catch, bring that ball in, keep his balance, and go for the score. I tell you something, Matt Blunden, and I said it early, is a big time player. He's a pro prospect as a football player, but the Virginia coaches told me that he wants to play basketball, but his future, I'm telling you, is in football. This guy's a 6'7", 232 pound junior who can throw the football. He's a pro prospect. You saw the graphic, an NCAA record tied by Herman Moore. He's had at least one touchdown reception in 10 games this year. And again, Virginia will play for one. Jake McInerney on to try to make it 24 to 13. I'm a little surprised. I thought they'd go for two here to try to get it to 10 points unless they fake this. They do not. The last extra point was blocked. This time McInerney drills it through. So it's an 11-point game with plenty of time remaining. 6.43 left in the third quarter. We've spoken a lot tonight about basketball, particularly about Cavalier basketball. A man who's an authority on that subject is with Kevin Kiley. Kevin? Thank you very much, Sean. Of course, this is Terry Holland, no longer at the University of Virginia. He's now down at Davidson. And are you missing the basketball, Coach? Absolutely, Kevin. There's no doubt about it. But this kind of thing keeps me busy. I wanted to see what Matt could do against Virginia Tech. And as you see, he's got him coming back now. That's tight enough. Tell me a little bit about this football players playing basketball at Virginia. You started this thing, and you kind of dropped it in Georgia's lap. What about the Sugar Bowl? Which way do you think they'll go? Are they going to go to the basketball team, or do you think they'll stay with the football team? No, they'll stay with the football team through the Sugar Bowl. That's their commitment. It worked out fine last year. Of course, they went to the Citrus Bowl, and then, of course, joined us, and we played very well down the stretch. It's a little tough sometimes knowing that those guys are out there. You worry about them getting hurt, that kind of thing. But I think it's great for the kids. Very quickly, a great story about Matt Flott, and he recruited the University of Virginia for basketball, didn't he? That's exactly right. We looked at him early and felt like, well, he's a good good basketball player but not a great one he's a great football player looked like he was going to go football the last minute he called us said let me send you some videotape i looked at the tape i said gee i like this kid so we talked about it with george welsh and set it up for him to come in and play basketball the first year and then try them both after that and he's done very well with it all right coach thanks so much thank you kevin all right back upstairs guys in the meantime, all the football coaches in the country were trying to recruit him mm -hmm. to play football. Including and, Mike Godfrey. Yes, yeah, so he came down to Penn State. I really think that he almost went to Penn State to play football. The Virginia football coaches tried to recruit him. They, he wouldn't even give him the time of day. Well, we should point out it works both ways in this arrangement at the University of Virginia. Matt London, because the basketball season went so long into the spring last year, with the Cavs' successful season, did not participate in football spring practice. So both sides have to make sacrifices. Good play action from Fuhrer. Throws underneath to the tight end, Daniels. He struggled for an extra yard and reached the 27. I like that play call from Virginia Tech. You just get a score against you and you come out throwing the football. Don't want your players to become passive right now. Herman Moore has four catches, 150 yards, one touchdown. The one thing the Virginia Tech defense didn't want to do was leave him alone. They didn't. They, sit, they double coverage. In the last play, he still beat double coverage. Outstanding receiver. And he's going to be a great pro, whether it's next year or in two years. Good cut by Hebron. He's into the secondary and finally down at the 42. A pickup of 15 and a first down for the Hokies. Well, Vaughn Hebron just ran by a defensive back right here. Watch the isolation play up inside, but he breaks it outside after the back block of the linebacker and then works up the field. Benson Goodwin missed the tackle. Tony Covington, number five, makes the tackle in the secondary. 64 yards rushing for Hebron. He's trying to add to that total, but he'll actually lose a yard or two as he was tripped up back near the 40. Loss of a yard on the play. That last play had to bring a smile to George Welsh's face because his players are coming back. And this, 
Virginia season, they've either blown people out or, or lost ball games close. They didn't have a close game where they could mm -hmm. turn it on at the end. Uh, most of their games, and they have had some close games, and most of their games have been blowouts. So George Ross is really looking for his team to give a comeback here today. And Tech is no stranger to close games. In fact, as Kevin Kiley and Frank Beamer discussed at the half, they have blown several second half leads this year. We'll develop that story as time expires. Fuhrer throws short, intended for Marcus Michael. Third and 11, upcoming. Matter of fact, we won't have to wait till much time passes to develop the story of Virginia Tech and their blown leads. Led South Carolina by 11 in the second half and lost. Led Florida State and lost. Led Temple and lost. And led Georgia Tech into the fourth quarter, three to nothing, before losing. Georgia Tech. And don't think that's not in the minds of the players when something like that Moore play happens. They start to think, oh, what's it going to happen again? And it's up to Frank Beamer now and his staff to make some plays to, to, to keep them loose to really aggressive. Third down, 12 for a Virginia Tech first down. More than five minutes to play in the third quarter. Sure, with plenty of time, throws incomplete. Tyrone Lewis broke it up. It was intended for Bo Campbell. Good defense. Will Cure. Good throw on the play. It was just good defense. Good secondary coverage. Jason Wallace back to field the punt from Chris Basha. You can feel the momentum shifting toward the Cavaliers. Short kick, and Wallace has to let it bounce, and it will be down by the Hokies at the 27th. 5.06 to play in the third quarter. Virginia back on offense, trailing by 11. Here you see the replay of the last play. Watch Will Fuhrer fake the play action. Devon Hebron holds the linebackers again. Now, they've usually been throwing curl routes. Here comes a tight end across. The corner route by Bo Campbell, number 11. He's very fortunate just called in get intercepted by Tony Covington, number five, and or Tyrone Lewis, number nine. Crowd's in this one now. They know that the momentum has shifted toward Virginia. The Cavaliers trail by 11. Blunden over the middle. First down, Virginia. Out to the 40-yard line. Aaron Mundy, the tight end with the catch, and here's Kevin Kiley. Uh, Sean, after that last defensive series, the Virginia defense, which was left for dead in the first half, they gave up 24 points, came off the field, a lot of energy, very excited. They feel they're back in the game. Defensive coaches told them when Tech goes to the I formation, watch out for the rollout and the pass. Back upstairs to you. Injured Cavalier on the play. I believe it's Jeff Tomlin, number 58. He's already in there for an injured player, Chris Borsari, who's been out for about five weeks with a broken leg. As they tend to Tomlin, let's check in with Tim Brando. Sean, another intrastate rivalry between Arizona State and Arizona. Watch the Wildcats QB, George Malaulu, take the option play into the boundary and into the end zone for a touchdown to make it 14 to seven. Wildcats, by the way, there are many that believe that Larry Marmy of Arizona State, the head coach, must come away with a victory if he is to hold on to his job in the Pac-10. Back to Sean, Mike, and Kevin. Kevin, that'd be an injustice. He's an excellent coach, and his quarterback, when his quarterback was playing early in the year, they were winning. He got hurt. He lost his quarterback and has had some tough sledding in the middle of the season. Big hole for Nicky Fisher. Tough run. He picks up seven. Out to the 47-yard line. He was finally taken down from behind by Anthony Pack, number five, a backup inside linebacker. Watch this play. You get the counter. Watch both linemen coming to the side, locking on the linebacker. Anthony Pack, number five, is going to make the play from his linebacker position. Just holds on and brings down Nicky Fisher. Virginia's got momentum. Mm -hmm. Key series, 4-10 on the clock third quarter and the score is 24 to 13 in favor of Virginia Tech but here come the Cavaliers getting right back into this football game bit by bit Fisher into Virginia Tech territory with a first down at the 44 here's what's happened Sean because they have thrown the ball well in the start of this quarter Virginia Tech is playing more with their outside backers they have to play 
Herman Moore. So now that opens up the running game. Now you're running against six people as opposed to running against eight. Just the threat of Herman Moore has opened that running game up. First and 10, Virginia, with 3.48 left in the third quarter. Blunden dumps it off. Kirby, plenty of running room. And he's finally out of bounds near a first down. He'll mark him out at the 36. But he was in the clear, not a defender, within seven or eight yards. I, I'm just so impressed with Matt Blunden. And the reason I'm impressed is you have to realize he's only had 88 snaps in games. He's only thrown eight passes. He looks like a seen, seasoned veteran out here. I, the kid's future is as a quarterback. Somebody's got to get that through to him. You would think the experience of playing pressure basketball would help him today, playing with poise as he has throughout. Victimized really by some drops. Again, it's Fisher battling toward the first down marker. Archie Hopkins had him around the leg, but Fisher wasn't going to go down without that fight, and he might have picked up the first down. The officials are now stopping the clock to take a look at it. Well, that's what I said earlier. The defensive ends are now playing pass, but they brought Archie Hopkins, a defensive end, in tight here. Here you see on the other side, Dar Darwin Hedman, the end plan as, as a backer, but you see number 37, he came from outside, inside, and made the tackle on the play to try to help on the run. Virginia's doing a good job guessing with Virginia Tech right now on defense. Matter of fact, I think Virginia's got Virginia Tech off balance now. Fisher picked up the first down. Four of those misses for Blunden were drops in the first half. Kirby to the 31. A gain of three, second and seven upcoming. We're inside of three minutes remaining in the third quarter. You might want to watch right here. Damian Russell, number 41, the free safety, who's the best cover guy in the secondary, just came off the field. Looks like he's hurt. Wouldn't be a bad situation now to try to pick on the free safety with Damian Russell out of there. Gary Dooley, somebody who has to get in this ball game through some type of route. On second and seven. Caught. Dooley. First down, Cavaliers at the 15-yard line. The reason you go to Derek Dooley right now is they're playing the run and they're double-teaming Herman Moore. Derek Dooley now becomes somebody who's going to be open. You see number 37, Hopkins stays inside. Greg Lasseter, number 25, has one-on-one -on -one coverage. Look at the cushion he gives Derek Dooley. Hopkins comes back and makes the play. Derek Dooley will be a big factor if Virginia's going to win this football game because of the one-on-one -on -one coverage he has. That's Derek's first catch. He dropped three in the first half. Spoke with athletic director Jim Copeland at halftime. He said Derek hasn't dropped three balls combined all year coming into today. Loose football. Steele lost the football, and Rusty Pendleton recovered for Virginia Tech. football coach George Welsh just saw the frustration he had momentum to drive Gary Steele on the draw fumbled the football that brings the crowd back to life Hebron out to a 20 for a gain of two before he's driven back by a host of tacklers Here's the play that the fumble occurs on. Matt Blunden on the draw. I just don't know if Gary Steele ever had the football. Number 40, Rusty Pendleton recovers it. Looked like a good handoff to me. It just uh, looked like they got penetration, knocked an offensive lineman back into Steele, and he may have dropped the football in that collision. Minute 25 left in the third quarter. Hebron. Submarine down to the turf at the 26. About two yards short of a first down. Well, Tony Covington came up there out of his free safety spot and made a big play. Here you see Virginia Tech in the second half playing conservative, a little bit conservative right now. Own 25 plays punt, 36, seven plays punt, and then force. But again, I think they're playing with the wind a little bit. Third quarter, Frank just wants to get into the fourth quarter with this lead and then maybe open it up a little bit and run the clock. Big play here, third and two, Hebron, first down, nearly broke it. 
He was tripped up by Covington and went down to the 33. And if Covington didn't make the tackle, Hebron was into the secondary with only one man to beat. Well, that's two plays in a row where Tony Covington's making the play. If your free safety's making the tackle, you're in trouble. Here's Will Fuhr giving the ball to Vaughn Hebron. Fullback lead on the backer. You look at the blocks right there. Nobody's getting off blocks. There comes Tony Covington up, which makes him susceptible to a play-action pass. Now, the way he's filling from that free safety spot. This will possibly be the final play of the quarter. Fuhr throws, caught. First down, Bryant, much more. Phil Bryant into Virginia territory at the 49-yard line, a pickup of 18. Will Fuhr on the face, holding the linebackers. See the throw right here, just a safe throw to Phil Bryant. Missed tackle, up the field, big first down. Linebackers for Virginia have had a tough time all day with that play action fake, watch it. Here they are, can't move, stop, check run, lost. They've got to get out of there a little bit sooner to help on those underneath routes. And the man who made the tackle, number 49, Gene Tolliver, is a third string inside linebacker. End of the third quarter. It's the Hokies with an 11-point lead. The fourth quarter is about to begin here in Blacksburg, Virginia, where the Hokies lead 24 to 13. First and 10 for Virginia Tech at the 48 of the Cavaliers, Hebron. Down at the 45-yard line after a gain of three. Here's Kevin. All right, thank you, Sean. Defensive back Damian Russell, number 41, got a stinger in his left shoulder. Mike talked about it. Says it's coming back, but the doctor says he doesn't know whether Damian's going to be back in the game. Back upstairs to you. Sean, that could be a big loss because he's the person, the player that's double-teaming Herman Moore most of the day. And when you take your center fielder out, your free safety, it opens up some things for Virginia. Tech defensive coordinator Mike Clark said Russell is the only player on their defense who comes close to matching up with Moore athletically. There's a drop. Would have been a first down catch for Bo Campbell, who has otherwise had a terrific day. That's the first drop by a Virginia Tech receiver today. Bo Campbell, number 11, Will Fuhr dropping back. He's just going to run an under route. The linebackers are dropping. You see number 31 drop, P.J. Killian. Bo Campbell came right underneath him and just dropped the football. This be a good time for a draw with Vaughn Heaven. On third down and six at the 44 of Virginia. Hebron won't reach first down yardage. He was stopped shy of the 40. He needed the 38. P.J. Killian again at the bottom of the pile, the leading tackler for the year for Virginia. P.J. still on the turf. Watch P.J. Killian, the right side of your screen, number 31, just sneak underneath there and make the tackle on Vaughn Hebron. Gets help from Gene Tolliver, number 49. Backside linebacker, no one came off on him. The center and the guard, somebody has to come off on the backside backer, and they weren't able to. Freshman got banged up a little bit. Virginia's had several players leave the field that have been hurt and come back on. Gene Tolliver is in there with part of that tackle because James Pearson has not returned. Wallace waiting for Bosch's punt. Wallace, fair catch. Long way to go for the Cavaliers. They trail by 11 and they start at the 11. Coming up following our game, Syracuse and Miami from the Orange Bowl. This is the Hurricanes' first meeting with the Orangemen since 1979. Syracuse had to pull out a win last week at West Virginia to keep their hopes for the Aloha Bowl alive. They will indeed go to Hawaii to take on Arizona. So you'll run right back to your room, order three pizzas, and you'll be watching that game. So look for Syracuse, I know. Linda Vincent, the sports and pace director of Miami, was our sports and pace director of Pittsburgh, one of the best in the business. We'll look forward to working with her next week when we bring you the Hurricanes in San Diego State next Saturday at 4 Eastern time. 
London going deep for Dooley into a crowd and intercepted. Second interception for Tyrone Drakeford. He had two receivers running streaks. Watch Tyrone Drakeford. He reached the pattern right away. There's nothing holding Tyrone Drakeford. There's no route on the backside here to hold him. He was able to come off and make the play. If there would have been somebody else coming down the other hash, he would not have been able to come off and make that play. As you saw in the graphic, his second interception today is third of the year. Pure to throw, caught. Nick Cullen close to a first down at the 42 of Virginia. Nick Cullen could have kept his feet right there. He would have turned that into some points. Nice possession type receiver. He's had an outstanding career here. Just ran a little quick five-step hitch route. Caught the ball. There was a tackle miss, but he just lost his footing. Will Fures had a good day today. 15-22 attempts, 250 yards, and two touchdowns. I don't think he in. Plus, he's had some big plays. Mm -hmm. Coach Beamer says the key to his success is being able to keep his feet underneath him. If he has time to throw... He's usually right on the money. Hebron. Close to another first down. Looks like he has it at the 31 of Virginia. Keith McNeen tripped him up. Well, this young man couldn't have come back at a better time for Virginia Tech. Vaughn Hebron. This is a big time back right here. Trying to toss sweep. You see all the blocks on the outside. They get the block on the outside linebacker. Phil Bryant, number 29, leads on the block. Number 16, Keith McNeen makes the tackle. But Vaughn Hebron has added something to this offense with his return. Quickness and speed. Back to back first down picked up by Virginia Tech. And now Fuhrer wants a timeout. He saw a strong safety fire coming from that wide side right here, and he was going to check off and took a timeout instead. 12.42 remaining in Blacksburg. It's Virginia Tech by 11. ESPN's presentation of CFA football, Virginia versus Virginia Tech, is being brought to you by Oldsmobile, who invites you to stop by your Oldsmobile dealer and see what's new from the new generation of Olds. And by Mr. Goodwrench, the GM service expert at your participating GM dealers. Largest crowd ever to watch a football game in the state of Virginia, 54,000. 157 on hand at Lane Stadium in Blacksburg, Virginia. The Hokies on the move, first and 10 at the 32. And it's Hebron getting over the 100-yard mark for the day. He squirmed to the 27 for a pickup of about four. Well, he does what all great running backs are able to do, keep your feet moving. Watch Vaughn Hebron take the hit here. They came with a corner blitz. Watch him keep his feet moving. His feet moving, just get as much as he can get. And he's moving up the field. Excellent run. Officially a gain of four. We'll stay with the hot man, Hebron. Tough run. He was wearing Tyrone Lewis on his back, but still managed to cross the 25. And he made his way to the 24-yard line. Talk about a big series here. They're bringing their corners. They're bringing safeties uh, defensively. They're trying to do whatever they can to just hold them to maybe three points. They hold them to three, they're still within range. When we go back to that pass that was intercepted to Derek Dooley, I believe what George Ross was angry about was that he, that maybe Matt London didn't throw it outside to Herman Moore. You're going to throw it up for grabs. Moore has a better chance to get it. On the big third down play, Hebron picks it up. He needed two. He got nearly four to the 20-yard line. a play coming right at you the toss sweep with Vaughn Hebron blocks inside the outside backer turns it inside Tyrone Lewis makes the play but again he picks up the first down Vaughn Hebron the Hokies are moving the clock is moving 11 10 remaining an 11 point lead for Virginia Tech Hebron kept his legs moving again 
and reached the 18 for a gain of two. Virginia must hold him to a field goal here. Virginia Tech, on the other hand, is going to try to get in that end zone and put this one away. As much as they're running the football right now, Sean, a play-action pass might be what they need right now to score a touchdown. Because they've got him so run conscious right now. This is the seventh play of the drive. They keep it on the ground with Hebron, trying to turn the corner. And he could not. Nice play made by Jason Wallace, the cornerback, to come up and hold that play to a short gain. They'll spot Hebron out near the 15. If Virginia Tech can win this football game, it'll be a big booster to their program because when you beat a team like Virginia, who's ranked and going to the Sugar Bowl and that gives you a winning season, there's a big difference between five and six and six and five. You have a winning season. Frank Beamer knows he can go on the road, he can recruit, he can get some more good football players. The sanctions of the previous staff are over, so he has a chance now to build this program. Third down and five from the 15. Hebron breaks a tackle, has the first down. And you talk about players of the game, Will Fuhrer is going to be mentioned, but Vaughn Hebron has made the big plays. Watch this. He's going to be tackled. He makes a move inside. Benson Goodwin misses him. James Pearson, the linebacker, eventually makes the tackle after he picks up the first down. He's made some great moves today to pick up the extra yards and the first downs. Ten minutes remaining. Hebron up the middle, touchdown! and they caught him in the end zone. Mickey Thomas delivers the extra point. 9.51 remaining. Hebron's touchdown makes it 31-13 Hokies. Ron Hebron and the Virginia Tech Hokies celebrating Hebron's touchdown, his seventh of the year. And he capped it by joining his fellow students in the end zone. They were the only people that hit him on that play. He was wide open as he ran that touchdown, but they had to pull him away from the students. 27 rushes, 137 yards. He came back at the right time. Already a 1,000-yard rusher for his career. He's a sophomore from Baltimore. Brian Reeves to kick off, 9.51 left. 31 to 13 is the Virginia Tech lead. Matt Blunden knows the Cavaliers must score on this upcoming possession if they are to have much of a hope, if not any hope, at winning this football game. Larry Holmes. Good return. Holmes brought it back to the 33-yard line, officially a 33-yard return. As we've mentioned a couple of times, Tech trying to win today to finish with a winning record at 6-5, and five, and it could have been much better. They've had a couple of narrow defeats. They played the three teams you saw with the losses on the first page of that graphic. Very tough, including Florida State, one of the best teams in the country. They lost after leading 14-3 at Temple and had the lead over Georgia Tech in their last game two weeks ago and lost. Terrence Tomlin. Into the secondary, Pollard down at the 46-yard line, a 13-yard pickup, and it was Damian Russell recovered from the Stinger who made the tackle. 
Virginia lined up in no backs and brought the receiver underneath. Watch Damian Russell, the free safety, back in the game now. There's a lineman trying to block him. Number two, Terrence Tomlin, he makes the tackle. You talk about Virginia Tech. When you're an independent in football, you must win early. You lose early, your bowl hopes are over. Now, this is a good 6-5 and five team that wouldn't, was not even considered for bowls because they lost early. And they come on strong lately, but it's too little too late. London to Kirby. He steps out of bounds with a short gain to the 49-yard line. They picked up four. How many 6-5 teams are going to be in bowls this year? Several. If, you, if they're going to be six or five teams in bowls, then you have to take a look at the end of the season who the better six five teams are. And here's a team that closed pretty strong. Well, it's just another in the amazingly long line of examples of the ridiculous nature of the bowls handing out bids early. You saw that graphic on Virginia's offense down, the production's down today. Blunden has it caught. Dave Sweeney out of the backfield to make the catch. They'll spot him at the 46-yard line of Virginia Tech, a yard and a half short of a first down. And perhaps they're starting to deal with reality along the Cavalier sideline. Well, Matt Blunden wants to get the ball to Herman Moore, but here's what he sees. Three people have got him covered. They're not going to let him beat him right now. If, if Virginia's going to come back and win this game, Virginia Tech's not going to allow number 87 to make some big catches. If he makes them, he's going to make them on three people. Third and a short two with eight and a half minutes remaining. Fisher drives for the first down. He reached the 41 for a gain of five before he was driven back. I, I think the important thing when I, I see George, George Welsh right here is you don't like to see a season in where you had such a great year and then all of a sudden things went sour and people were disappointed. You have to remember his big producers, his tight end, Bruce McGonigal's not playing, Sean Moore's not playing. I'm not making excuses. I'm just telling you realistically, the guy has lost the biggest part of his offense. Mm -hmm. And hopefully they'll be back for the bowl game. This is a good football coach, George Welsh. He has brought this program around and done a great job here at Virginia, along with a great staff. First and ten, London gets away from Shambly and throws incomplete. The Cavaliers, of course, got off to the great start. The win at Clemson really was what ignited that strong start. They won their first seven football games. Then went into the big clash at home with Georgia Tech and lost. Georgia Tech will go to the Citrus Bowl as the ACC champion. Two losses in the last three outings for Virginia. And they're looking at three losses in four unless they can mount a spirited comeback in the last 7.53. Blunden. Running for very little. Out of bounds at the 39. Chased out by Rusty Pendleton. All the Cavalier basketball fans are holding their breath on that one. Look at Terrence Tomlin running wide open, but the problem is Matt Blunden doesn't have the time on this pass to find him. Terrence wide open, but the pressure that came from just a four-man rush, he wasn't able to find number two. Terrence Tomlin wide open. Blunden picked up two with the scramble. It's third and eight. Man open, caught. Derek Dooley has the first down. Lost his footing as he tried to get away from Drakeford. But he has the first down at the 28 after a gain of 11. With the way they're playing, with the way Virginia Tech's playing defense now, doubling and triple on Herman Moore, they can have this play anytime they want it. You get the one-on-one -on -one situation. You saw the defensive end blitz. Look at the cushion right here. They can take this almost anytime they want it. It's a free throw for them. Virginia has all three of its timeouts remaining. 7.20 left in the football game. London dumps it off, intercepted! Jerome Preston! That tells it all right there, Sean. Five turnovers. 
on the replay, you're going to see it's a run and shoot screen pass. That Matt Glendon's going to throw to the back, number 45, 42. See the screen pass is set up. The number 93, Jerome Preston, reads it, goes back, picks the pass off. It's a, a dream for him. Number 93, Jerome Preston, defensive lineman. He saw the run and shoot screen from the start, played it. Preston from Martinsville, Virginia. Ironically, that is the hometown of Sean Moore, the man whom London is replacing today. These defensive linemen for Virginia Tech come up with interceptions. Jimmy Witten, the end, has one. Todd Brown, a defensive end, has one. And now the tackle, Preston, with the pickoff. That's three INTs this year for the defensive line of the Hokies. I just don't think Matt Blunden saw him because of the screen. He was inside uh, Preston. He was inside. He didn't see him. He came off a block, and he was trying to shovel the ball. And just got it picked off. Right here, baby. Woo! Five turnovers. The officials have stopped the clock momentarily. Sideline warning. That's the first one I've seen. It's about the 14th week of the season. <laughs> now, generally, the official along the sideline is asking you all day long to back up, but very rarely do you. Very hear rarely the do you warning. see that. Very rarely, and then you about if we will watch the sideline about two plays. They'll be all back out there again. They're excited. They want to get in the game. Fuhrer in the offense, wisely taking plenty of time in the huddle. Somebody didn't eat their turkey. <laughs> Brought it with them to the game. <laughs> Hebron wants to stay in bounds, and he did. Was heading for the sideline, then alertly cut it back toward the middle of the field to avoid crossing the sideline. He's down at the 48, third down, and six. Facing Virginia Tech at Hebron is up to 141 yards rushing on 29 carries. He's just had a great game. Quickness, speed, he's got good strength. You saw his great leg movement a little while ago where he just keeps his feet moving. He's had a big day for Virginia Tech. They needed him in this ballgame. He's been the difference. That and the five turnovers. Mm -hmm. Biggest turnover, the fumble by Steele in Virginia. He's looking to close within a touchdown, less than a touchdown. Eugene Rogers with the tackle on Hebron. After a gain of one, they're still five yards short of a first down. And Chris Bosha will come on to punt. Well, Frank Be Beamer's turning it over to his defense now. He's just trying to run the ball, run the clock, punt it. Let his defense go in and play pass coverage now. Now they're dangerous because they can just sit back in a 4-2 front with a wide tackle six and defend the pass. Great punt. Wallace fumbled it. He fumbled it at the five-yard line. Virginia Tech has recovered. Bernard Basham picked up the muff punt by Jason Wallace. receivers the punt receivers to take any ball inside the 10 yard line here he tries to recover it on the four yard line number eight Bernard Basham here's the second look he's way inside the five just takes his eye off the ball you always like your receivers Sean put their heels at the 10 yard line anything over their head let it go first and goal for the Hokies and the Cavaliers, disorganized, forced to use one of their remaining timeouts. They now have two left. Tech on its way to a winning season. Sean McDonough with Mike Gottfried and Kevin Kiley at Lane Stadium in Blacksburg, Virginia. Cavaliers continue to self-destruct. Wallace drops the punt. Basham recovers, and Tech has it first and goal at the four-yard line. Well, here comes Vaughn Hebron. We're going to try to get him the ball and get him another touchdown. Hebron stopped after a very short game. over 
scoring that sideline right now. George is feeling the frustration of the last two weeks. Figure out what he has to do now in between the time he has to get ready for the bowl game. On the other side, Frank Beamer and his staff complete the season on a winning note, which they've done very successfully for many years. He said that this game was important because they wanted to have a winning season to be able to continue to say to people throughout the state, particularly recruits, that they are going in the right direction. This will be two consecutive winning seasons for the Hokies. Maybe we can come on the sideline and get a picture of that's his son that's holding the cord. He used to disrupt my office all the time when he was a little guy running around. You see him right to the right. That's yeah. Shane Beamer. He's grown up now and I want to make him go back and put together my office again. He used to destroy it. Shane's a little camera shy. <laughs> People at Murray State University are proud of Frank Beamer. He did a great job down there, and there's been a lot of good, solid coaches in that league, and the two of them are in the playoffs today, Eastern Kentucky and Middle Tennessee. Third and goal. They've tried Hebron and Poindexter. They fake to Hebron, and they throw the touchdown pass to Poindexter. Just a little quick out route. Thomas adds the extra point. There's another replay. Watch the fake. Nice fake by Will Fury. On the tailback, one up in the air to complete the fake, and then the throw for the touchdown. It's Frank Beamer. He's pretty comfortable right now. Watches the fake. Wants that GA to get out of his way so he can see whether it's a score. <laughs> and now he's happy. That's why the referee was trying to push him back. He can't see the scores. This will be Tech's first win in Frank Beamer's four years as head coach over their arch rival, the Virginia Cavaliers. George Welsh will fall to four and five as head man at Virginia against Tech. We're about a half hour away from the start of what should be a terrific football game between second-ranked Miami Hurricanes and the Orangemen of Syracuse, meeting for the first time since 1979. Ron Franklin and Gary Danielson will be on hand for that one. This, what, this is what makes college football rivalries because now you look at the scoreboard, it's 38 to 13. If you're the winning coach, you're really happy and you're anxious to get on the road recruiting. If you're the losing coach on the other side, George Welsh, you can't wait to get started again because you know there's going to be another day and you're going to build for the next football game. George knows he's got to go recruit, get ready for the bowl game, and there'll be another day. The great thing about these rivalries, they come around again. Brian Reeves to kick it off. 3.23 to play. It's 38-13 Tech. Holmes thought about it for a moment. And he brings it out to the 26. Here's Tim Brando. Sean, I couldn't help but overhear the conversation you and Mike were having about Virginia Tech not going to a bowl. Take a look at the other teams that are not going to bowl games. Temple, I mean, after all, Bill Cosby would have probably come to a bowl game had they been invited. Baylor and North Carolina both could have gone to the Independence Bowl, cho chose not to. But Virginia Tech, Minnesota, South Carolina, all teams playing well at the end of the year don't get to go. Schedule a game on November the 10th because that's when the deals are made. You better get your sixth victory then. Back to you, Sean. Tim, you're exactly right, and you pointed out Temple's record of 7-4. Let me tell you, Jerry Burnt went into that Temple program was 1-10 and, and built that program to a 7-4 record. 
and because maybe they don't have the attendance that you'd like to have, they're penalized and don't get to go to a bowl game. That's what's wrong with the bowls. And a team like Temple is a Cinderella story, and instead of playing in a bowl, they're home. My hat's off to Jerry Burton and staff oh, yeah. and what they've accomplished there. And I think we should, uh, again, you're looking at a team that should be in a bowl, Jim. So uh, I agree with you. And the rest of those clubs are all pretty good football teams. But uh, Temple's the one I think should be in the bowl. What a great turnaround, and you talk about Jerry Byrne. He did a great job at the University of Pennsylvania, went down to Rice and struggled, came back to Philadelphia to be the head man at Temple. And I think he has to be given serious consideration for National Coach of the Year honors. Herman Moore with the catch. I think Bobby Ross is another guy who should be considered an honor, but some to broadcast Jerry Byrne. One win last year, seven this year. I agree with you. Jerry Byrne is somebody should consider. There's another guy, Howard Schnellenberger, what he did at Louisville. He took a program over there that was down and built it back up. You're right. Bobby Ross, George Welsh has done a great job. You can't look past the job Bill McCartney's done, too. He's done a great job back-to-back. -back. He was the National Coach of the Year last year. Kirby. Out to the 45, a gain of six. Down to 245 left in the fourth quarter. Tech comfortably in control by 25 points. We talked earlier about Virginia Tech looking for a place to play football. And the Big East seems to be the most likely possibility. Well, I think it is. Uh, Miami, of course, by joining the Big East, has really added to that particular uh, league. What a catch by Herman Moore. In plenty of traffic, but Herman caught it. And he's down at the 31-yard line of the Hokies. You talk about Herman Moore now. He's a big-time receiver that's not quitting. I mean, he's standing in this ballgame. But you look at the graphic in front of you. Boston College, Syracuse, Pittsburgh, and Miami are in there. They need to help West Virginia, uh, Rutgers, Virginia Tech, Temple, East Carolina. Let them get in that league and play football. Louisville, somebody I'm not sure will win that uh, football. And I'll tell you a reason why. They just got $2.5 million from Fiesta Bowl, so they may want to stay by themselves. This will be a grounding call against Blunden. Al Shambly had him in his grasp. And Blunden intentionally grounded the football. I saw a penalty flag come from the bench. One of the players threw it. <laughs> I'm serious. From the Virginia Tech bench. That intentional grounding on the offense. Loss of down. Oh, there's probably been a few times you'd like to throw a flag from the bench. Wouldn't have had enough to keep my pocket. Here's a great note on Virginia Tech. They've not lost a final regular season game since 1976. A streak that will remain intact with this victory. Kevin Colley just let us know that flag came from the stands, so the uh, fans penalized the uh, officials with that throw. Look out, goalpost. Student body is getting ready to come on the field. After the penalty, second and 18 with the loss of down. London slips down back at the 49 yard line. I'm going to say one more time about Matt London. He's an outstanding quarterback. Had a tough assignment today. I thought he played well. He's going to be, he may be the quarterback in the Sugar Bowl. And then I think you'll see somebody with four weeks of practice as a starter. You'll see somebody do something big in that Sugar Bowl. He certainly made an interesting choice. A marginal Division I college basketball player, as Coach Holland said. An all-state quarterback in Pennsylvania chose to play basketball as his major concentration instead of football. And he's a backup now to Sean Moore. Derek Dooley with the catch, but that's only a gain of one. There's a statistics, 21 out of 33 for 333 yards. The three interceptions, uh, have been his major weakness in this football game. Going deep down the field, and of course his percentage would be better were it not for those drops that really played a major part of this football game in the first half. Who knows what Virginia would have been able to do offensively had they held on to some of those passes. The home run ball overshoots Johnny Wilson. And that's all. The ball goes over on downs to the Hokies and the security folks doing all they can to hold back members of this record crowd. Sean, I might say one thing. Since 19, in 1984, they ran, they wore these maroon pants, Virginia Tech. They came out today in warm-ups with white pants. They were 2-0 in 84 with these maroon pants. They win this big game. I'm going to suggest that Frankie wears them every game next year. That's right. 3-0 and oh in maroon pants, and as Mike mentioned, the first time they've worn these pants since 1984.
Todd Wooten, the backup quarterback, allowed to take a snap. He's a junior from Virginia Beach. This is the problem with Virginia this year is that this is the only time that Matt Blaine, when they were way ahead, mm -hmm. had 88 snaps, only three eight passes coming into the day's game. And I think the officers are outnumbered. This will be the last play of the football game. Virginia Tech wins the battle of the Old Dominion. that can be very dangerous. Virginia Tech, for the first time under coach Frank Beamer, has defeated Virginia. 38-13, the final score before this record crowd in Blacksburg. Our Ream players of the game. For Virginia Tech, Vaughn Hebron. He rushed for 142 yards on 31 carries. And for Virginia, Herman Moore, despite being double and triple covered most of the football game, he took in six passes for 179 yards. Once again, the final score, 38 to 13 for Virginia Tech. We'll have more in a moment.